Hello and welcome to yet another live hacking session on the VIP Z Security Discord server. My name is Dimitris and today we're going to hack the bank machine from Hack the Box. This box is easy rated and I will show you how to root it. So without further ado, let's get started. We can check that we can ping the machine and this is the IP of the machine 10101029 and we get a response which means uh, we can access the machine. So I'm just going to start with a simple nmap scan to get all the open ports on the machine. The command I'll be using is nmap dash sv which probes all the open ports dash a which enables OS detection and I'm going to specify the IP of the machine. So we'll just give it some time to run. Okay, so now that we have the results, uh, we can see that we have three open ports port 22 for open SSH, port 53 for the DNS, and port 80 for the Apache HTTPD. We can try to load the, we can try to load the page with the IP of the machine, and we get the default uh, Apache index page. Uh, so since this machine is um, running DNS, it is safe to assume that the DNS hostname for this uh, machine will be punk.hackthebox. Usually on Hack the Box, the machine hostnames are the name of the machine and .hackthebox at the end. So in this case, it's going to be punk.hackthebox. So we can go ahead and add it to the etc host file. Nano etc hosts. And now if we access the page with the hostname this time, we get a completely different page. We can now see a login page of what appears to be a bank interface. We could try some SQL injections to bypass the login page, but this won't be successful since I have already tried that. What we can do is try to run a go past scan on the um, hostname and find the hidden directories in this web server. So I'm just going to do just that. I'm going to do go buster, dear, I'm going to specify the URL of the machine. And also I'm going to specify the word list I'm going to be using, which is stored under user, share, dear buster, word list, and the name is directory 2.3 medium.txt. Usually hack the box uses this one, for the hidden directories. So I'm just gonna press enter. I don't know what happened here. Let me just do something else. Uh, actually, let me try this. Okay, there we go. So we can, we can get balance transfer uploads and assets. Let's check balance transfer now. As you can see guys, we can see uh, many, many files. Uh, and uh, these appear to be encrypted uh, values of the username, email, and password of the users in the bank. Uh, so this is where the box, uh, uh, the, the bank hack the box machine got some hate because what you have to do here is search through all of these entries and find one that is unencrypted to get all the files. Uh, so instead of just, um, just searching, searching through all of these and searching this file size uh, for a lower one, we can just uh, do something else and something simpler. And I'm just, I'm just gonna show you how to do that right now. We can stop this. And now what we have to do is get all the files. So the, all the files that are in the web server that we can see. So I'm just going to do wget, specify the uh, dash r for recursive, and the um, URL. So what this will do is just download everything, uh, so all of these files, so that we can uh, sort them and find the one with the lower file size. So let's just give this some time to run. There we go. Now that we have all the results, uh, like I said, we have to sort all the, the all these files and find the one that has the lower file size. 
So let's just uh, change the directory to the one that it created, which is bank.hack the box. Uh, go to the balance transfer. And we can see all the files here. Let me just remove all the index HTML files. We don't need those. There we go. So uh, these are all the files that we need. And the command to actually uh, sort all the files is going to be first the word count command and specify C for characters and specify the .acc. And now I'm going to tell you to sort these uh, all of these files with numbers and reverse it to get the lowest file size. And there we go, we get this file which has the uh, uh, unencrypted values of the username, email and the password. So if I do cut this file, we can see that the encryption failed in this one. And if we cut this file, for example, we can see that the encryption was successful here and these um, email and passwords got uh, encrypted. So in this one, we can just take the, the email and go back to the login page. and get the password as well and we have successfully logged in the bank dashboard we can see uh, right here our username and the balance now if we go on the support page we can see that we can create a ticket specify a title and message and we can choose a file uh, so that's going to be really interesting Let's just check the source code of this page and we can see here in a comment that it says that they have added the file extension dot hack the box HDB uh, to execute as PHP for debugging purposes. Uh, what, is, what this means is that not only we can upload a PHP uh, reverse cell, it's going to execute it as well. So if we if we test this with a simple PHP file, I'm going to show you. Um, let's locate the reverse PHP file. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh yeah, it's PHP reverse. There we go, here is the file. If I copy the file and then specify my current directory to paste it here, we can see that I got it. So... Let's just change the name of the file to be cell.php uh, and I'm going to edit the file. I'm going to specify my IP and the port I'm going to listen to. So now I can try to submit the PHP file and we can see that we cannot upload this file you can only upload images. Uh, but we saw earlier that the uh, extension hack the box uh, can be executed as PHP. So now, if we change the name of the file from cell.php to cell.htb and then try to uh, submit it again, we can see that we have successfully uploaded the file so this is great now all we have to do is start a listener with ncat and uh, open the file and now we have successfully got a reverse cell to uh, to the machine so normally in a pen test you wouldn't need to do this you would just stop here write down a report and submit it to the a company that uh, told you to do a pen test on but um, in ha on hack the box we have to root the machine in order to complete it so I'm going to try to I'm going to attempt to uh, escalate my privileges to become root because right now we are the user WW data now let's go under the home directory and the Chris directory and we can see the user.txt file. I'm going to cut the file 
and this is the flag that we needed. So now we can try to run a Linux enumeration file um, to check for uh, valuable information within this system. I'm going to download the a lin enum. So like I said, this file is a, a Linux enumeration um, file, which after we run it, we get valuable information for the system. I'm going to first get it on my machine. And we can start a Python simple HTTP server. What the Python uh, HTTP server does is uh, uh, just work just the just like the Apache 2 server that Zaid shows, uh, shows in the course. So any files that are in this directory uh, can be viewed from the IP of the of our Kali machine. Specify the port 8000, and we can see the file. But I'm actually in the wrong directory. I have to go uh, to the punk.htb. Where was my file? Yeah, there we go. Here is the file. Actually, we can just run it here. So I'm going to show you what I meant by uh, simple HTTP server. If we check the IP of the of our machine, which is 10.10.14.6, we can see that we don't have a result. If we specify port 8000, which is uh, running, uh, we can see here that it's running on port 8000. We can actually access the files here and if we click on the Linux enumeration file we can just download it. So that's what we want to do in the target machine. So what we can do now is go back to the machine, change our directory to the, uh, the TMP and now do wget http 10.10.14.6 port 8000 and specify the name of the file which is linenum. There we go, we got the file. If we list the directories, we can see it right here. And now we're gonna change the permissions of the file. And now I'm going to run the file. We'll just give it some time to run. So the scan is complete. Um, let's have a look on these files right here. Nothing interesting here. We can check for the SGID files. But what we want to focus on is the SUID files. We can see an interesting file right here, which is the emergency file, uh, which is stored under var, uh, hdb, bin. And let's go ahead and try to find out what this uh, file does. So I'm just gonna change my directory to var, hdb, bin. If we list the directories, we can see the emergency file right here. And uh, let's try to run the emergency file. Looks like we're not gonna get a result, but we, we have successfully become root. But what did the emergency file do? So um, from my understanding, the emergency file is supposed to be there for any other user that wants to become root. So they just run the emergency file and then they become root, they have root access. But this is totally unrealistic. This would not happen in a, a real life scenario. Uh, so this is the way to become root in this machine. We can see that we are root. And if we go to the root directory and list the directories, we can see the root.txt file. So if I do cut root.txt, we um, we get the value for the flag. So we had the user flag up there, we have the root flag now. If we submit them, we would be able to successfully pawn the machine on Hack the Box. So that is all for this box. Uh, I hope you learned something and I hope you found this useful. So if you have any questions, please let me know.